Hey everybody, welcome back into Sad Times. Um, we were off uh, last week, I know we've been a bit sporadic. Uh, we're back live tonight, I know two weeks ago we were not live, uh, and, and moving forward we're not always going to be live. But anyway, this is Sad Times, uh, and for those of you who have not watched the show before, just a little explanation. Basically, uh, my name's Kevin, I bring on a guest uh, uh, each episode, and uh, we have a discussion about some times in their life that was maybe... Not the easiest uh, times when they were sad, anxious, upset, things that made them upset, experiences that they had. And, and we just kind of discuss it in hopes that we um, help people who have had similar experiences feel a little bit less alone uh, in the world. So uh, that's kind of what we're doing here. It's usually about an hour, uh, and we, we appreciate you joining. And tonight uh, is my good friend Haley. Hi, Haley. Hi. Hi. So <laughs> Haley and I uh, have known each other about eight years which is fucking weird yeah um too long yeah too long that's yeah that's about that's about seven and a half years too long to know me so uh i was born early my mom was just no i'm just kidding um we've known each other we worked together uh for god five five ish years yeah five ish finkel yeah um and uh you are like me are a theater kid right mm -hmm. That's yeah right yeah studied acting acting in yeah. school in college in indeed i did yeah were you a theater kid in high school um i came to it late uh like real late like as in i applied to many schools uh -huh. um and i kind of was like looking towards a forensic science track and really? then i and then i, I just kind of snuck it in like under the radar when my mom and I were touring around colleges and she was like, you, you, you keep talking about theater a lot more. So your mom was like yeah. encouraging it. Kind oh, no. of era. No. Okay. No, <laughs> she no. was definitely not. Okay. Um, definitely not. She was very much uh, confused as to why I thought I could pull the wool over her eyes. Okay. Um, and then I was like, yeah, I'm kind of, I'm kind of into it and you know, whatever. And then she finally, um, I guess submitted to it um, yeah. <laughs> eventually, but I got a lot of scholarships, so I think that made it easier on her. So I have to ask you this: it's a bit off topic, but mm -hmm. was she supportive of you in theater? Yeah, yeah. I mean, eventually, yeah. um, I think she she wanted to see if it took, um, right? For yep. like, you know, I mean, which is fair for any parent of, mm -hmm. of any American child. Yeah, um, right, where we don't take care of our artists. Well, but also, like, you know, nobody knows what they want to do oh. for the first year mm -hmm. that they're in college, right? Mm -hmm. Like, they're major changes all the time. Yeah. Um, so I think she was kind of waiting to see if that's what happened, um, and it didn't. And so then she eventually was like, okay. oh, you're good. Oh, okay. you're good. Great. Okay, yeah. Nice. Yeah. It's it, I, That's what my parents were always supportive about it, which I thought was pretty awesome, because yeah. I had... Many friends in there whose parents just gave them shit all the time about yeah, it, and yeah. that's just too bad. So they let me find my own way, and it sounds like your mom kind of let you do the same, mm -hmm. so that's awesome. Yeah. Um, so where are you from? Uh, I'm from Maryland originally, but I've lived here um, for like 12 years. Yeah, me so. too, yeah. Yeah. Um, do you miss Maryland? No. Okay. <laughs> no, Great. I don't. Not no. really. I mean, I, I would say that I miss um, Baltimore more mm -hmm. than I miss, like, where I grew up. Because mm -hmm. um, I grew up on the eastern shore of Maryland um, in uh, a town called Cambridge, which when you tell people that you're from Cambridge, it's very good for them for a second. For Yeah. And then you're like... You don't know what I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah, it's talking not Harvard. About, it's not the UK. Yeah, yeah, like I'm talking about like the county in Maryland that was literally left off of the Capitol building. Why? They forgot. Oh, okay. Um, and also it then later sur it, uh, garnished a national reputation as being the um, county in the USA mm -hmm. uh, that had the highest rate of crabs. And I don't mean shellfish. crabs. Shellfish, yeah, I don't mean that. That's, wait a <laughs> minute. First of all, hold on. They yeah. study where the most crabs are. Well, that's pretty awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so your county, what count? What's the name of your county? Dorchester County. Dorchester County also sounds kind of fancy. Yeah. Dorchester. Yeah, uh, that's kind of the the deal. Yeah. In in that. Neck Was it of the a words. pretty? Uh, is it a working class type place or? Um. Yeah, it's like Waterman. Right, so like uh, it's guys who work on the water, um, oh, okay. you know, 
um, like fishers. Yeah. And, okay. Yeah, fishermen and um, and crabs. You know, crabbers. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it's not ironic. <laughs> Maybe the crabs think it's ironic. Well, the best thing there. is that it's like like literally the tagline for Mar- is like you know we're known for our crabs. Like that's yeah. like a Maryland. You guys just thing. went that extra mile. Oh yeah, just committed to the bit. <laughs> just really committed to it. I would be. And I think you are. I'd be pretty fucking proud of that. Yeah, it's well, it makes for a good anecdote. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'd say so. So uh, you grew up there. Mm-hmm. Um, were you born in Dorchester County? Um, I was technically born right outside of it. Um, I have like the kind of like Leslie Nope story mm-hmm. of like where it's like you grew up in a place you thought you were from it the, your whole life, and then it turns out your mom went like one town over because it was better. It was a better oh. hospital. Yeah. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I'm like, you know, her version is, of course, Eagleton. Mine is Easton. So. Oh, yeah. First two letters are the same. Yeah, it's the same. Yeah. Yeah. And did you, do you have any siblings? I do. I have an older brother. Older brother. Okay. Mm-hmm. And um, growing up was kind of like in your house, was mental health something that was talked about at all? Um, no, definitely no. not. Feelings, emotions, things like that? Uh, I was always told <laughs> that I was uh, so emotional. Like my um, my mom is very uh, collected. Um, oh, I, is she? Yes. Okay. My my brother and I used to um, make the joke, kind of joke, um, that we genuinely believe that like she could have a career. In the CIA, and we wouldn't know. Oh, like true lies. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that she would have just like a second life, uh-huh. you know, where she's just like completely singularly focused towards her goal. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what is her job? So she had a lot of, of different jobs because like when my – so my parents separated mm-hmm. when I was like eight, got divorced when I was ten. Mm-hmm. Um, my dad was like a director of Parks and Rec. Oh, there you go. The, Man, the Leslie Nope all over. It's really, yeah. yeah, it's all over the place. Um, and then, so when they split up, like, my dad moved away. Um, and so my mom was just having to kind of figure it out, right? Yeah, um, very similar to my mom. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And um, and so, yeah, she just started doing, like, secretarial work. Mm-hmm. Um, and then she um, just kind of worked her way up. She ended up, before she actually retired... Um, she was a Maryland Occupational Safety and Health ex- Inspector. Oh. Yeah. Um, no so, shit. Yeah. That's pretty awesome. Yeah. Yeah. And she is retired now? Yes. Yeah. Okay. And she lives in Florida now. Oh, so, so she got away from the crabs. It's <laughs> good. Or did yeah. she bring some with her? I don't know. I okay. mean, they also have a lot more, I would say, weapons grade uh, Crazy? type of vermin. Yeah. Well, uh, true. <laughs> and down in, down in Florida. So your mom would say like, oh, you're so. It was your mother who said you're so emotional. Yes. I'm assuming. Oh yes. Was it, was that because you would like get like have meltdown type of deals or just get really mad or, I mean, or like what brought her to say that? I don't. You might have to ask her. Um, okay. But like she continues to say it to this day. Oh yeah. Like we um we went on a cruise together um a couple years ago. We we went down to Cuba. Um, and we were, it was like the first night of the cruise, which like, don't get into a fight on the first night. It's a bad idea. It's It's a a rough precedent. Idea. Yeah. And, um, she didn't care, you know, like, uh, and I was, you know, had a couple cocktails and, uh, was just like trying to talk about something like emotionally charged and was trying to clear the air. About something. Like and within your family? Emotionally charged? Or no, just... like between she and I. Oh. So um, like you guys had some tension. Yeah, 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 yeah. And it was like, I think it was something about like, you know, I think it was about the guy that I had dated right before this trip. Um, and and anyway, I was just trying to like clear the air. And then she started to get like really prickly. And I was like, I mean, don't do that. Like, let's, we can just have this conversation. And she was like, I just, oh, you're so much more emotional than I am. Do you think that she just, does she just not even want to acknowledge emotions? Well, I think that some of it is hard Mm -hmm. for her. Um, I mean, 
I think that she she's as I kind of alluded to, she's a bit of a self made woman. Yes. Um, right? Like, um, but not out of like her I would say her own desires to be that. Out of necessity. Out of necessity. Right. Right. Yeah. Um and as like a direct result of like two um poor marriages, right? Okay. Um right. so I think that there's there's that and also she comes from like um a much smaller mountain town in Maryland called Frostburg. There's oh um, ooh, yeah, we've yeah. got we've got it all for yeah. like a tiny little state. Yeah. And John um, Waters. Yeah, and John Waters. Yeah. Okay. Um and uh and so yeah, she um she uh was born out of wedlock in the fifties. Um and like, you know, was kind of always the black sheep of, of her town kind of thing, like kind of Has she told you about that stuff? I mean, we knew it growing up. Like we knew it, but like there there were some things that have like come out in the They've last started few to trickle years. out, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Things yeah. like start to just like trickle out. Like I remember when I was um I think I was like uh fourteen or fifteen or something. I'm like looking in like photo albums. Uh-huh. Um, like old photo albums in my grandmother's house. And there's this picture, this like basically looks like a, you know, wedding portrait. Okay. Um, of my mom and a guy who's not my dad. And yeah. And I'm like, who's this? Yeah. <laughs> like to, what did she say? To my to, grandmother. To your grandmother. Yeah. And yeah. my grandmother's like, oh yeah, well that's so and so. Yeah. Uh and I was like, Cool, what's the relish? You know, like like what's going on here? Uh-huh. And Are they cosplaying? Right. Like <laughs> Um, and you know, and it's us. Super like seventies photo. Oh you know? sure. Like, Probably. Did he have a lot of manly chest well, hair? Well, there's just like no, out? like just like a huge like mustache, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. Like that kind of like wispy. You sure it wasn't side your, your dad in a, uh, a disguise? Uh, I am sure, but he did have a similar look years later. So she has a type. She had, I guess, a bit yeah. of a type at all the right. time. All um, right. yeah. or all of like American men look the same. Also true. In the 70s. Also true. Um, yeah. I think there was just like one look and everybody very was like, shaggy. I'm just going to lean into yeah. it. Yeah, <laughs> lean, lean right the fuck in. Um, yeah. yeah, right. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. So then uh, my grandmother was kind of like, oh, you know. What have like, I done? Oh, I've made a, mis- a huge mistake. Yeah. Like, you know. Um, it was just you and your grandma at the time? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And then. Um, Did you immediately call your brother? Yeah, I think he was in the other room and I was like, dude. Does this ever come out to yeah. you before? And well, then he he I don't think handled it <laughs> that well. Um, and uh, yeah, it was just it was because my brother's four years older than me. So if I was like fourteen or thirteen at the time, he I was, was in like, high school. Yeah, but like they were not. They were bumping heads. Yeah, yeah. Exceedingly. Is he, is he very similar to her in that he's very? Or no, no he's no. much more fiery. Yes. Yeah, I would say so. I, and this is a bit off of, but so I grew up. Uh, my parents got divorced. My dad left when I was eight. Mm-hmm. My parents got divorced. So I lived with just my mom and my sister, right? Mm-hmm. And there was lots of this, right? Yeah. And nowadays, between when I, you and your mom. Uh, yes, but also between mom and Kelly, and definitely between Kelly and I. Kelly's my sister, mm-hmm. former guest of the show. Um, and uh. Nowadays, and I wonder if this is the same with you. I imagine it is. Whenever we get a little frustrated with each other or whatever, mm-hmm. I always like to point back to like, look, look at what we have though. We've got this weird bond, and it's not weird; it's familial. Mm-hmm. And it's like we have this sense of humor because we went through all this weird shit together. Right. And we went. We were really sad at the same time. Mm-hmm. We went through some really hard times. My mother, at the same time, after my dad left, kind of went back to become a secretary. Mm-hmm. She wasn't really working, and then she went back to school, et cetera, et cetera. Right. So we went yeah, through same. all that crazy. Right. Yep. We went through all that mm-hmm. stuff, and there's a weird stigma to it. Maybe mm-hmm. I was on like the free lunch program for a while, and mm-hmm. all that stuff. Um, and so anyway, but now we have like a group text, just the three of us, and it's mm-hmm. just giving each other shit. <laughs> well, mainly them giving me shit, but you yeah. know, whatever. So do you have that same kind of bond with your, your brother and your mom? Um, well, I, I would say that like, um, my mom and I, like, we figured it out. You figured it out. Yeah, we figured Sense it out. Since the cruise? Oh, before that. Before, I mean, okay. like, like 
Because you guys, you that, went to Greece together too, right? Yeah, we've we've been um, on several trips now, and I, I think that she's like really trying to continue to to tap that wanderlust um, in okay. in me, which is I, I'm fine, happy yeah. to oblige. Yeah. Um, but um, yeah, I mean, when I when I mentioned that that story from the cruise, that's kind of just like that's gonna be in our relationship, like forever. You know, like like that kind of like. Oh, that tension or that... Well, no, I, I would say that, like, um, we would... Like, she's always going to say that to me. Even though oh, the emotional it thing. might yeah. not mm-hmm. actually be true. I think it's more of a deflection tactic for her yeah. than it is an actual, like, an identification of something that is weak in me, it's... which is how I interpreted it for a while. That's what I was going to ask you. And then you. I was like, no... <laughs> but in the moment, would it frustrate you, make you sad? Oh, of course, yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, it would it would make me feel exceedingly vulnerable, um, because you know, I mean, I I think she always kind of taught me to be strong mm-hmm. and independent, mm-hmm. and she was a great role model for those things. Mm-hmm. And I always say that, like, I think the best things about me I I got from my mom. Mm-hmm. Um, but so then when she would try to dart me and like basically call me weak it it means more for sure when she says that to me than if anybody were to say that to me and how do you in that moment when she said that is that when you said we can have this conversation yeah because i don't see it as like an attack right from her anymore like i don't feel that way because i mean you know truthfully like i went to school for acting and like got in touch with my emotions there but then I also like started going to therapy um you know like almost 10 years ago now and Mm -hmm. just kind of started taking care of myself Mm -hmm. um and just trying to like consistently mine for improvements you know when you were a kid did you um struggle with like um what maybe, or were you aware of any sort of struggle? Were you sad? Were you anxious? Anything like that? Or did you feel like you felt pretty normal as a kid? Yeah, I don't know, honestly. It's hard for me to pinpoint. Yeah. I, I remember, like, you know, certain, like, memories where it's like, I kind of feel like I remember the bad stuff mm-hmm. about my childhood mm-hmm. more than I, I remember the good stuff. There's good peppered in there, but it just doesn't, like, surface as readily as as the negative stuff. Um, I think that's natural. Yeah. 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 I think it is. It's a shame that it's natural. It is a, yeah. You know. Maybe it's not natural. That, I'm sorry. I was speaking <laughs> for all of humankind. Uh, Tell when us I just if meant, it's natural. When I just meant, that's how it works for me too, I right. think. Right, yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. did, so, did you, uh, growing up, you came to theater late. Mm-hmm. So, did you... The bad stuff that you maybe kind of remember. Did mm-hmm. you ever like um, talk to your friends about that bad stuff that was happening, and like, or did you hear from friends who were saying, "I'm having a hard time with X, mm-hmm. Y, and Z"? I mean, I think we've all had those conversations, but mm-hmm. I, I guess I'm I'm trying to figure out if and when you had that emotional type connection. Go ahead. Uh, just uh, real quick in the comments, they say I kind of feel sad for her mom because she has a wall up. Got. And then they said he got her too many times, maybe, and can't allow herself to be emotional, maybe. Oh, yeah. I mean, I think that that's spot on. It's a coping mechanism. Yeah. 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 For sure. Yeah, that's exactly she, it, yeah. She went through a lot of hard shit. I would imagine you, know? you would just kind of turn, just be like, okay, I have to turn that off now because I have to raise these children. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. They said easier to build a wall than continue to get hurt. Yeah. Yep. I mean, absolutely. Um because, yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't want to, like, air all of my mother's dirty laundry no, 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 in public. No, 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 right, of course but, not. But, you know, she she did have to do that several times over. Yeah. You know, so, yeah, I mean, it's that's another reason why I don't get upset by this anymore. Yeah. You know, because it's like I just don't, there's just no point, you know, in, in me trying to, like, I don't know take that a certain way or like or or think that she's trying to control me or like you know anything mm-hmm. like that like it's, it's fruitless you know so yeah anyway. i and i've i've never i thought i've never thought you were quote an emotional person right but mm-hmm. i have i have seen you 
in the time in the time that I've known you, you're very aware of people and how they're feeling. Mm -hmm. uh, I think you're a pretty empathetic person, mm -hmm. um, and I've seen you more than a handful of times, many times, be there for somebody who is having a hard time. Mm -hmm. Did you? Uh, is that something that is just feels natural to you? Um, uh, are you kind of the friend that people kind of go to with, mm -hmm. with that type of stuff? Yeah, 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 you said sure. that in a very knowing, nodding <laughs> way. Can yes. you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, so yes, I am this person. Yes. Uh, for, for all of my friends, mm -hmm. um, and my friendships. And, um, it's something that I, I, I have a love-hate relationship with. Okay. Um, because... For a lot of my, like, late teens, early 20s, I was just kind of taking care of other people. So I kind of, like, learned how to do this, and I, I acquired empathy, I guess, if, if you want to look at it that way. Mm -hmm. Again, through my relationship with my mom, yep. um, and when my dad left, right? And mm -hmm. I, I just kind of moved into supporting her. Right and and supporting her sure. emotionally. Um, and that's a fucking lot for yeah. an eight to ten year old. Yeah, it was. Yeah. yeah, and and but I just then it kind of just becomes naturalized to you, right? Yeah. Um, and, it becomes a pattern. Mm -hmm. And so then at, and I would argue it's a good one because mm -hmm. I can be there for other people. I can have these types of conversations. Right. Right. Like um, I I would say that like even though we've already said like. You know, my mom says I'm like an emotional person and says it in like kind of a negative way. Yeah. Um, I actually think it's a huge strength and indirectly she caused it. Right. And maybe, and, and again, <laughs> I don't want to go too far down that road, but like yeah. maybe she, when she says like, you're such an emotional person, there's a part of her saying because of what happened and, mm -hmm. and everything, I'm a part, I'm the reason that, that I see her as an emotional person. And right. Like there's like a reflection right. in that statement. I mean, I can't, um, neither of us have kids. Right. Uh, I just, I, I, I worry if I ever have kids, uh, I worry about everything, but if I worry if I ever have kids, like I just, I would just be so worried that I'm going to fuck them up all the time. Right. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And you're exactly right. Being an emotional, empathetic person especially in this world nowadays, mm -hmm. um, is an extremely important thing. Mm -hmm. But it's not always easy. Yeah. And and to be the person where <clears throat> you're, you're kind of the friend that a lot of people come to, when did you really start uh, really start dealing with some really life, like um, real life, we'll call it real life, hard situations with people and their mental health? Like how old were you um, and with your friends? Well, I mean... That's going to kind of segue us into, you know. You got it. <laughs> Try and, yep. 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 Yeah. Just kind of naturally go into it. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I mean, when I was um, 15, um, I had two of my friends uh, commit suicide within, like, three months of each other, I think. Um, and they did it in very different ways. Um, and one of them was my, my good friend, her brother. Um, and I mean, this is, you know, if anybody is triggered by anything like this, like this yeah. is a little bit graphic, but, um, he climbed up on a radio tower, threw himself for the radio tower. Um, how, his, can I, how old was he? He was 16. Um, wow. she was 15. I was 15. Okay. Right? Um, and then like three months later, um, a friend of mine who had transferred to, like, um, another school in the county, um, he uh, brought a gun into his high school and killed himself in the bathroom. Um, so both of these were, like, very public shows of... Yeah. Yeah. Um, and very young kids um, who were just feeling completely powerless against everything um and i never really got any answers on either of those right um like as into why they did it yeah i right. mean they didn't like really either of them really like leave a note or anything like that and you know and, and again it was it was done in such a public way that it was it was hard to kind of move past that but like so that was like Okay, 
that's like a real life thing. And and again, like you know, the place in Maryland I come from, it's you know, it's it can be a little bit more grisly um, than anybody would sure. assume. I just I just keep thinking longshoremen. Yeah. Like, guys with hooks for hands. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. Crabs for groins. Right. Exactly. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right. Um. So yeah. So that was some pretty dark shit. And um. D- sorry. So you say it's really public, and it. Obviously, you talk to your friends about it, but it's. Mm-hmm. Are you saying like as the community, it wasn't like people didn't talk about it? Or yeah, did no, they? no, no, no. Okay. I don't. I, I mean, I like barely talked to my friend uh, whose brother this was mm-hmm. um, about it over the years, even. Um, and they were very. I, w- I would say they were a very open family mm-hmm. um, as well. And of course, them being that close in age, they were very close. Was that her only sibling? Yeah. It was her older brother. Um, and, yeah. So she didn't really talk about it that much. Um, Understandable. And, and then, you know, we kind of, like, moved past it and, like, graduated, went to college. Yeah. We went to the same school together, actually. Um, but then we started to kind of divert and... She went that forensic science way? <laughs> no. No? She okay. actually circled back to theater oh, okay. in, like, her senior year. Yeah. But she she went a few other places. It's plays. what brings us all together is yeah, theater. It really does. Yeah. Okay. together. Yeah. Um, and I don't know. Then I feel like it just started to... Um, once I became, like, a, you know, like a young adult mm-hmm. and graduated college, like, that's when I really started to kind of reflect on this stuff, um... And then I would, you know, I don't know, I've, like, had a few friends who were always kind of, like, threatening suicide. Um, Can you, if I may ask, mm -hmm. threatening means, like, something as blatant as I'm going to kill myself or I might hurt myself? All of it. All of it. The gambit, yeah, like, like... And do you think they were serious? They're... There was no reason for me to think at the time that they weren't. Um, now, I don't think so. Um, well, I don't think that's fair to say. Um, I think that this person is still in my life. Mm-hmm. I'm a very close uh, friend of mine. Um, and I don't think that we were equipped to deal with what he was feeling at that time. Yep. And we have since become equipped, and the shame of it is, is that we've become equipped because we had another very close friend of ours, mutual friend of ours, kill himself. Um, And that then led, I think, him to seeing how he was affected by that. Yeah. And then he's kind of... Seeing how he was affected by that and seeing, like, if I were to do this, mm-hmm. this would happen. Exactly, yeah. So, mm-hmm. I, and I I have been that person more than once with, with close friends mm-hmm. uh, where I've talked about it. Um, I've never personally felt I was going to do it. Mm-hmm. But there have been times in my life where I've been so overwhelmed yeah. with emotion and, and anxiety and stuff. And mm-hmm. so I always I always say one day my brain will win. And yeah. It's fighting its fight. Right. And I'm fighting the good fight. I go to the gym every day and mm-hmm. I take my Prozac and I do all that stuff. But one day it will win, you know. Right. And I try to tamp that talk down. Yeah. Especially with, you know, people who care about me. Because mm-hmm. I don't think I'm going to kill myself. But, like, there's that fear of it. Of, sure. of my brain. just It's just a monster. Right. So... And, and it makes me think of, like, people will say to me, well, it's so selfish. And then I think about that, yes, I guess that is the ultimate selfish thing. But at the same time, to suffer that much, yeah, mm-hmm. I, I don't know, it makes, it almost makes a sense yeah. for, for people who actually are like, I'm now going to do this. Yeah, and, and this is a very tough subject because of the fact that it's, I personally alternate around it, around how I feel about it. Sure. Yeah. Um, constantly, you know, uh, from from one person to the next, you know, and I actually just had another friend a few months ago. No. Yeah. Really? Mm-hmm. Yes. 
um, somebody that I, I lost touch with and um, I wasn't as close to this person mm -hmm. um, but yeah um, you know again it's, it's kind of there's unfortunate mental health precedent in um, in all of these cases I would say um, I don't know for sure those first two that I mentioned yeah I don't know for that for sure Right, because I never got so, those answers, right? right? Mm -hmm. That's what that's kind of what I mean by answers. Yeah. Um, whereas these most recent uh, examples, um, I definitely know that both of these guys were struggling very long term with um, pretty egregious mental health issues uh, uh um, depression um, yes um but also like so this most recent uh mm -hmm. friend of mine he um in his family like his, his mother was a paranoid schizophrenic um and so he had the genealogy of that um and and the hereditary nature of that in his own mental health um was he medicated for that? Um, I believe so, okay. but I, I really don't know. Yeah, and I, d I don't know much about yeah. um, paranoid schizophrenia, So, but yeah. it sounds just like a nightmare of a... It just sounds awful. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it's it's the most extreme, you know, I yeah. think you can really get. Uh -huh. um, where, you know, everything that you were saying about some days you're just kind of like, one day my brain will win. Mm-hmm. That person's brain is five times louder than yours. You know what I mean? That's just... So it's like it's so like much Dolby, harder. Dolby surround sound. Right. Yeah. It's like so much harder for that person. Um, and so if you have even any inkling towards that, any yeah. slight ver like versioning of that, that, that does make that so much harder. Um, my other friend, uh, who you know... Um, I did know him, yeah. Uh, he was definitely also suffering with um, some very hard uh, levels of depression. Um, there is a there is a term for it. I didn't know it at the time. Okay. Um, and I can't remember it now, which is a failure on my part. Um, That's okay. But he um, was also just dealing with so much weight you know, like on his spirit. And and it was very difficult for him, I think. I mean, this was a, a, a person who, you know, um, you would never have known it really. Um, yeah, that's what I was going to say. So I didn't know him as well as you did. Mm -hmm. uh, we worked together. Uh, we joked together. Uh, uh, one Christmas we worked together and our names, our last names put together was Christmas. <laughs> And uh, and so we, we made a whole thing about it and, yeah. and all this stuff. Um, I could tell maybe that he was a little um, – I could tell that he was probably anxious mm -hmm. or so it seemed to me. Mm -hmm. But when I found out, I was very surprised. But mm -hmm. again, I, I didn't know him that well. Were you surprised? I can't even describe to you how surprised I was. I – I mean, I think about that day more than probably any other day in my life um, because it was just, I mean, it made no sense. I found out like over like Gchat from like his roommate who was my previous employee, like it was, it was all piecemeal and then I just like, you know, like, like told my boss um, mm -hmm. and was like, gotta go and like I still didn't know if it was true when I was like in the cab like going to his apartment um and then I like get there Did, sorry yeah he did not kill himself in his apartment it was in a neighbor's but I didn't know that at the uh -huh. time and neither did they weren't sharing that to anybody who was non-family yeah. um and um and yeah and so like he, uh, so he didn't do it there, um, but there was, like, kind of what seemed like a risk of it um, at the time because, um, you know, and I mean, this is, like, a lot of detail, but, like, um, he had psoriasis, um, and so there was blood on his bed, 
right? But it wasn't from, enough. But just from just him, from like scratching yeah, the psoriasis. Right, right. Mm-hmm. exactly. Um, but all you have in that moment is like I've now been told that my friend killed themselves. There's blood in his bedroom. I don't know. Were you alone or was somebody with you? I was with his roommate. So, you, but you went up there alone in a cab. Yeah. Okay. Got yeah. it. Sorry. Go ahead. Um, and then you know we're just like standing there like looking at each other, basically like being like I don't know what to. Do. I don't know what you're saying to me. I don't know what to do. Right. And then, um, I think the, like, I think the police showed up and talked to us for a bit, but like, he wasn't telling us anything. And I was like, okay, well, I've got to go. I'm just going to leave. And, you know, I, I went home and, um, I also like lived above uh, a police officer at the time. Mm. And so I like, and also I'm like, you know, calling my friends and like, you know, just hysterically sobbing and, you know, um, I mean, insane level of emotionality um, where you're just in free fall. Uh, and anyway, I asked my uh, neighbor um, if he would just let me know if anything came through on like a scanner or a report wow. or something of like a a guy this age who matched this description. Can I can I ask a clarifying question? Yes. So how did his so his did his roommate know where he was? So his roommate found out I think from his mom. Um and because the police were going to the apartment to like okay. You know? And the roommate was at home. Yeah. Okay. Right. So yeah. he was like I don't know what the fuck's going on, you know, like and he's upset and doesn't know how to like tell me these things and I'm like losing my mind and just yeah it was just like a lot um and and then yeah I like I just kind of had to wait how long did you wait uh I think we found out I think I found out the next morning so like I don't know uh, 18 hours were you or something so during that time, you said uh, uh, you were in a free fall, just all the emotions. Mm-hmm. Did you feel, was there anger in there at him for what he'd done? Or I no? couldn't have gotten there yet. Oh, Eventually, yeah. Eventually, yes. you did get there. Eventually, for sure, I got there, yeah. Um, but the the weight of, the physical weight of the sadness was so much that I I remember it so viscerally that I use it as a litmus test now to oh. determine how sad I am. So, like, let's just say that we bought you a dog, and then a week later, like, you got hit by a car. And yeah. you're, like, sad. You're like, am I also, that sad, though? Also, cool example, Kev. Thanks. Um, <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Hey, look, I live Make up to the, to the name think of about the show. dead dogs. Yeah, well, God. I mean. Um, um, so you use it, okay. So it's like, okay, this is hard, but is it as hard yeah. as when we lost this friend yeah 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 no because so, i mean i i literally like was laying on the couch and just like you know just feeling like you have like stones just on you you yeah. know and you're just being pressed into really yes mm-hmm. got a question from uh, yeah did, did you did you realize how sad the people were or in hindsight did you know i know you said that they had had talked about mm-hmm. maybe harming themselves, but did you think that was a thing, or, or in hindsight, did you look at it and went, oh, the, the, well, the you, things were there? And, and, and you I said he, he had a weight on his spirit. Yeah, but that, again, I feel like only I re- came to realize, like, after this happened. Like, truthfully... Like you put two and two together, yeah. and it's too late. Yeah, because there was only, like, a handful of, of examples. Um... Where, when I thought about them retroactively, I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, he was real sad that night. Like, there was Mm. one specific Mm. example where, like, he had broken up with this guy who he dated for, like, a few weeks or something. It was very short. Mm -hmm. Um, And this guy broke up with him, and he lived, you know... um, I mean, Bobby lived in Uptown, and this guy lived, like, in Logan Square or something. Um, And so completely opposite. And, you know, he, like, I remember he was telling me that he, like, rode the bus, got, like, super drunk, 
rode the bus. Um, it was like raining, stood outside of this guy's apartment and just like drank and just like, did he try to get his attention? No. He just was yeah. there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. And like, I remember him telling me that at the time and I was like, ah, but I mean, do you need a hug? Like, like, what do you need? You know? And, but that was as far as my thought about it went. You know, like, I would never have thought, especially just given, like, he was such a giving, caring person. I mean, you remember. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, he was literally, like, the guy who, like, he had this thing, which I don't know if you ever were familiar with it, but he would always, like, say, like, it's Haley Day. Oh, yeah. Where it's, like, you have to make all the decisions so I that you're, yeah. so that you're, like, 100% selfish and yeah. that you're getting all that you want and all you need. Uh -huh. You know, um, and he did that with everybody. It was something that, like, um, I remember somebody said at his funeral. Um, they like mentioned that, and that was um, that was really good to to hear. You know that like, um, but you know, but then it also made it all that more confusing. You know, at the time. Um, but yeah, since and because this was a few years ago, right? Um, so I've since processed it over and over and over again and I continue to do so all the time um but is this something you've talked about in therapy as well a bit yeah um I don't talk about it as much as you might think mm -hmm. um actually uh I write about it um I I started working on um a play uh, about this, specifically him, um, but I'm actually thinking of, of changing my my tack. Okay. Um, because I, I thought about the fact that it's it's actually been so many people. Um, that did did you did that kind of that thinking come about with your friend you just lost a couple months ago? Yeah. It was mm -hmm. kind of like, wow. Yeah. Yeah, and I say a couple months, it was like a month. Like, yeah, it was very and close. And you said, um, he was he uh, medicated for paranoid schizophrenia? I, I really don't know. You don't know. Okay. Yeah, because um, he, he moved to Denver like a um, year and a half, two years ago okay. or something, and we had kind of lost, lost touch anyway before Do that. you know if... The, our mutual friend was he medicated? Do you know? Yeah. He was okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, but I don't remember what. Which, by the way, I I I'm not joking. I feel I have to say, medication is not a bad thing. It's a good thing. Mm -hmm. It's a helpful thing. And uh, I have a very close friend of mine who um, just went on medication for the first time in his life, and uh, today was his first day, and I'm very excited for him. And there should be no shame at all in. Um, uh, going that route. Yeah. That, I just want to say that. Yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, so when you lost um, your close friend, uh, our uh, co-worker and your mm -hmm. close friend, did you feel like you could have, st like, did you have that phase where you're like, oh, what, what, what could I have done, that type of thing? <sighs> I'm sure I did. Um, but I think I moved out of that pretty quick. Good. Um, I was mad at him for a very long time, a very long time. Yeah. Um, because it it really did not make any sense at all to me. Um, and it's it's taken a lot of me like trying to process through it, and trying to see it from his side, that like it has really been the most helpful. Um, so it's that same of... empathy we were talking about before mm -hmm. and yeah. just allowing yourself again to feel, I think it's important to feel that anger. Uh, yeah. I, I try to stop myself from feeling that anger mm -hmm. in, in like these grieving situations. Mm -hmm. Uh, because when I was younger, I would just get so mad about everything and everybody's like, Kevin, you have to calm down, calm down. You're right. making so much trouble. So now I'm like, Oh, anger bad. Right. You right. know what I mean? Yeah. But right. in this, it, I really believe it's healthy. Yeah. 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 No, I mean, I agree. I think that, honestly, I think that the whole scope of it, the whole kaleidoscope of, of the emotions that you feel when you're grieving, you have to give credence to each of them 
And that's hard. It's very hard. Yeah. Because some of them pass quickly. Yeah. Right? And then some of them you are just like locked in for and you want, a it, long time. And on the ones that you're locked in, are those the ones that you want to um, just go the fuck away? Mm-hmm. And they won't leave. And yeah. so there's that, that strange relationship with that feeling. Because you're not resolving it. You're what not you actually – like you're not you're not resolving the feeling or at least if it's going to stick around, if you're going to continue to feel that way, you haven't done something or like the block hasn't been lifted. You know what I'm saying? Where yeah. it's like where you can then move to the next one, right? The five stages of grief uh-huh. type of deal. Yeah. That's an interesting – I mean that makes perfect sense. That's an interesting way to put it. And I think that maybe we think in these situations, oh, well, no, I'm past that. But you're mm-hmm. not. And yeah. so you're stuck on this one note. Yeah. And until you allow yourself to see exactly what's happening for about what you've lost, mm-hmm. you'll you'll deceive yourself till the end. Yeah. I think. Yeah, for sure. And I I, I have had uh, two friends of mine from high school have uh, taken their own lives. Mm-hmm. Uh, one one of them was a very close friend of mine when I was a real little guy. And I remember specifically being at a pool party with him uh, at the town pool for somebody's birthday. And that was the first time I talked about suicide with anybody. Mm -hmm. And he's one of the few people I ever talked to about it. Hmm. And um, we didn't talk long about it, but we just, I don't remember, I remember we talked about a knife and slitting wrists. And Hmm. and, um, anyway... I fell out of touch with him. Yeah. Uh, and get this, he was a lawyer and a CPA. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. Wow. I mean, that just blows my mind. I mean, but uh, I was in India and uh, for work. Yeah. And um, I got a Facebook message from somebody I went to high school with. And I'm yeah. like, this can't be good. <laughs> you know? Right, right. Uh, yeah. And she let me know, and it was just like, oh, he shot himself and. It was just, I, I, I didn't know what to, how to deal with it. I still don't mm-hmm. know how to deal with it. I mean, and again, I had fallen out of touch with him. Yeah. I don't even think I've dealt with it. I don't know. Mm-hmm. And then a couple years later, that person who sent me that message killed herself. Oh, my God. That was a, a year and a half-ish ago. Wow. Maybe. Yeah, and I'm I, sorry. Uh, that's okay, and I I don't much like. I have a bit of an insight into what was going on with him, with her. Yeah. Much like what you were talking about with, when you were 15, I I don't know what right. was happening. Right. And just I try to, and and I think of people, <clears throat> famous people. We all know of famous mm-hmm. people who've killed themselves, and somebody that I admire greatly uh, is David Foster Wallace, a writer. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And he killed himself, and he wrote about mental health a lot in his writing, and he talks a lot. And and I just think his dad said something after he killed himself that was something like um, he just couldn't do it anymore. Right. And I I, I try to accept that, that people mm-hmm. are just like, can't do it anymore. Yeah, I mean, it's it's not funny haha that you say this, but it's, it's funny that you say it because um, there are... This is a very odd thing, um, mm-hmm. but again, I think I've had to like process this and I over process it, and I, I keep trying to like, you know, because it's just it's happened so much. Just like it, just have to keep processing this specific type of of incident and grief, right? Um, and so when I was telling you that I, I was starting to write this play about um, about Bobby, and uh, I had a dream one night where um, it was one of those very, you know, visceral, realistic type of dreams where I was like laying in in bed in my current apartment, which of course he never saw or was in, right? Um, And I was laying there and uh, and I just looked up and he walks in and he sits down next to me and I just, you know, said, I don't know why you did it. I still don't know why you did it. And he went, I was just suffering. It was too much. And that was in my brain (laughs) that I thought that. So it's like, 
it's true. It's like that that is the thing. I mean, I think about like Robin Williams, for example, like we think about like these like visibility things that we get now, unfortunately. Right. Yeah. But like Robin Williams was was similar to that. Right. Where it was just like, you know, he, he struggled with depression his entire life. And like, you know, people don't understand somebody taking their own life that late in life. But it, it is it's about the fatigue fatigue is a really really good word for it yeah and i was pretty shocked's not the right word i was pretty impacted by his death Mm -hmm. because that there's a man who all he did was just bring joy to everybody right all the time Mm -hmm. no matter how old you're you got the genie you got mrs doubt all of Mm -hmm. it right and then just to lose to to be like oh you were suffering that much too Mm mm-hmm and there's a party that says, well, of course he was. I mean, he, but it's just so tragic. Mm-hmm. And, um. Yeah. But I mean, you know, like, I, I said the thing about the, the visibility of celebrity deaths. It's like, it, it, at least it helps us to have, like, a conversation like we're having right now. Mm-hmm. Um, where we're talking about the importance of mental health and checking in with yourself and making sure that you're consistently like trying to to level yourself out i guess is maybe the that's a good way to say it and and to kind of i i often say when i go through really hard times in my mm-hmm. life at least a couple that i can think of i i say i've forgotten who i am it's like i i've just become so far away from myself right and it's it's this horrible lonely feeling your confidence is gone it's yeah. all gone. It's over there, and you can see it. And mm-hmm. You're like, oh, that's who I am, right. but I don't know how to do that anymore. Right, yeah. And because you're so beaten down or, or whatever it may be, it, you may not want to, quote, burden your friends with it. Totally, right. Mm-hmm. Which you should always talk to your friends. <laughs> yeah. Always. You're not or a burden. Or your family. Nobody's yeah. a burden. Um, so it, was there anybody else, like, um, that that you were kind of – shocked by i mean i guess everybody's shocked when somebody kills himself mm-hmm. but as far as somebody who's who's kind of famous that you found out and you're like oh i yeah. mean i think that like you know i, I kind of mentioned to you the other day but alexander mcqueen yeah yeah f- he's a fashion designer uh-huh, right yeah okay. he was an absolute genius like you know like gothic macabre kind of juxtaposition with with fashion and and couture you know like it's just kind of a very like edgy couture designer Mm -hmm. um and and yeah that was that was just one that i think like genuinely came as a shock to to most people at the time i mean i I forget what year it was Um, 2014 or yeah something something like that. that um and again he'd like you know just had this host of success and you know like fashion week after fashion week after fashion week and you know um lauded as as one of the absolute greats a legacy tastemaker you know like Mm -hmm. uh like really somebody who who just kind of comes onto the scene and and is an instant legend you know in in their field um and then it's just you know like that that one was was definitely was he like 30 yeah i think so Mm mm-hmm and then another one that I just thought of is Anthony Bourdain. Yeah. And I personally, mm-hmm. nothing against Anthony Bourdain. I've never really watched a lot of his shows, but mm-hmm. I know so, I mean, so many people who not only are a fan of him, but mm-hmm. admire him. Yeah. And then when I found that, when I learned that, I was like, I could not believe it. Right. That he did that. I mean, he was another one who, you know, who struggled so much with his own demons mm-hmm. throughout his entire life. He was addicted to drugs for a long time, right? Heavily addicted to opiates, yeah. Yeah. When he was living in, in Massachusetts, I think. Um, and, and yeah, I mean, that, that was another one where it's like, you just struggled, you like, your whole, whole life. But again, it's like, on, on the outside, it's like, he looks like he's on an upswing, right? Where it's like, oh, I have this, like, new wife and child and the successful television show where I'm mm-hmm. traveling the world and I'm getting to do the thing that I like to do, which is like eat food and meet eat people. Food, right? right. And like, you know, it's just like you're living your, your, your 10. And then it's just, it's gotten to the point where 
it doesn't really matter what the like that is is if you're not taking care of what's inside, inside. checking in with yourself as right. you said and it, it's one of the main reasons I want to do the show not not something so always extreme as as suicide but mm-hmm. so often we live and at least I don't know if you've had this experience I I sometimes think well this isn't logical right so I'm not thinking this is emotionally thinking I think well everybody else has it figured out they've got it figured out <laughs> right I don't yeah and and that person seems happy and that person seems happy mm-hmm but we're all we all are fighting our own battles, and mm-hmm. that's why it's so important that you just even in just small little moments to be kind to people mm-hmm. because they're just dealing with whatever the fuck. Totally. And yeah. the same is with Anthony Bourdain. We're seeing him on TV, as you said, new wife, new kid. Um, it's like that poem, uh, Richard Corey. Have you ever read that poem? We had to read it in school. It's a really short poem about a guy who everybody loves in town, and mm-hmm. he's walking down the street, blah, 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 and it rhymes, and it's real nice. But And then he, at the end of the poem, he just goes home and shoots himself. Um, you had to read that in school? Yeah, I know. Well, <laughs> I mean, look, we weren't preoccupied with crabs, so what were we going to do? We were going to read <laughs> suicidal poetry, you know? Fair enough. Yeah, fair enough, fair enough. We, we, didn't have our, the... <laughs> yeah, we didn't have our little combs out, okay? <laughs> uh, well, Haley... Oh my God, it's really hot in here. Um, yeah, it's interesting. <laughs> that was a that, that was a lot to share. So thank you very much. That's not easy. Mm-hmm. And um, I and I'm sorry. I have to reference my phone to do this. Um, uh, but I do want to give the suicide hotline number. There is a 24 hours a day, seven days a week uh, phone number. It's one eight hundred two seven three eight two five five and Kind of what we were saying a few minutes ago. Yeah, sure. 1-800-273-8255. And and, and just what we were saying a few minutes ago, you're never a burden, ever. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm always happy to listen to my friends, no matter what it's about. Um, And uh, if you're feeling any sort of inclination, talk to your family, your friends, they love you, or, you know, give that phone number a call. Uh, and there are trained professionals there too. But Haley, thank you so much for coming on. Yeah, thank you for having and, me. And um, really appreciate you being open and, and talking to us about that. And uh, um, hope we hang out again soon. Yeah. And when you get back from your trip. Okay. Um, <laughs> but uh, everybody else, thank you very much. I don't know if we'll be here next Thursday, but we will have a new episode the Thursday after for sure on uh, the 22nd of August. Um, but yeah, thank you again to Haley and thanks everybody for watching. And again, um, I'm going to just say it one more time. It's 1-800-273-8255. Um, go ahead and give that a call if you're struggling. Um, thanks for watching and, uh, hope you have a good day out there and we'll talk to you soon. Bye.